Welcome to your program, Shalom, Shalom, with your host, Dr. Marisol Pelser, and my sweet, beloved husband, Amen. Dexter. Dexter. Amen. Be blessed. Be blessed. Amen. You know, it's, it's such a blessing to, to be able to come to you every week and teach the Word of God. You know, the Word of God changes our lives. Amen. It impacts us. You know, and, and, and we get to know the Lord because the Word of God reveals to us Him. And, and, and you know, it teaches us so many things. It teaches us how to pray. It teaches us how to behave. It teaches us all these spiritual mysteries, you know, that are so critical. And today's topic is really exciting. It's about the refining fire of God. You know, we all know that we receive Jesus as our Savior, but the Lord Jesus said, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, which is the paraclete, to be your helper and your comforter. And he will baptize you with the Spirit and with fire. And that's a lot in two words. Mm -hmm. So I am very excited. So before we start, I'm going to pray. Amen to start the program. So Amen. thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Father. We praise you. We worship you. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus for you to anoint our lips. Amen. For the words that we say be guided by your Holy Spirit. Yes. Let the Holy Spirit speak and bless the people. Father, let your Holy Spirit teach them the word of God in truth and impregnate it in their hearts so that they get to know the Holy Spirit in a more intimate way. And they learn to listen to his voice. And they learn to hear the Father and obey Jesus and serve him as his Lord and Savior. Father, we just thank you for this in the name of Jesus. Please, Dexter, tell us about the Holy Spirit. Why, amen. Well, brothers and sisters, we just love you and welcome you today. And again, shalom, shalom. May God's perfect peace be in each one of us as we walk with him, our beautiful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I want to I step back for a second, and this is going to be about the baptism of fire, and, and, and stay tuned because at the end the Lord has released a prayer. And when we've been in ministry the last couple of weeks, we've seen the fire of God falling in the baptism of fire and baptism of power on people. We're going to pray for that at the end because many of us are tired of walking in our own strength. We want to walk in the fullness of the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. because that is the love, the compassion, the mercy, the spiritual gifts that transform people's lives and bring them to Christ. So we all need this and we all desire it. So we're going to pray for that at the end. So stay with us because the Lord has said he's going to release a powerful fire today as he's been doing in the last few weeks as we've been ministering at the altar. And so I want to just step back, though, and for me, these are things that I, I never really understood until I studied the scriptures and the Lord revealed it to me, um, but I want to talk about the baptism with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So first, I want to just start with a fundamental verse scripture that Marisol spoke, and we're going to just go to it. It's Matthew 3.11, and then we're going to actually talk about the Holy Spirit and how he comes into us. So Matthew 3.11. Let's take a look at that. <clears throat> this is John the Baptist speaking, of course, um, in Matthew 3.11. And John the Baptist is speaking, and he says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Because remember, he prepared the way for Jesus, and the way to come to Jesus, we know, even in Acts and later on, is repent and be baptized, and you'll be saved. In other words, repent and then come to Jesus. So repentance is paving the way to come to Jesus. It's necessary that we see our sinful life before a holy God and the need to repent of those sins before a holy God. So John the Baptist did a baptism to repentance. Um, but he says, But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He, being Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. We hear a lot about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but we want to focus today on the fire aspect of it. 
because that's really important that we understand that aspect of it. Now, before we do, though, I want to just stop and step back and talk about how, what happens when we come to Christ. And I want you, if you can, to turn to John chapter 3, verse 5. John chapter 3, verse 5. Now, I'm just going to step back. We're going to read this. <clears throat> and then we're going to step back for a second. This is Nicodemus. He was a Pharisee, and he came to Jesus in the night. Kind of, he wasn't quite sure he should be seen with Jesus, so he came to him at the nighttime, and he asked him a series of questions. And he asked in verse 4, John chapter 3, verse 4, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Because Jesus told him, you must be born again. It's like, how can you be born again? Can you go back into your womb? It's like, well, this doesn't make any sense in the natural. And, and listen to what Jesus said in verse 5. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So, I want us to understand something here really important. When we believe in Jesus Christ, we are born of water and the Spirit. So first of all, we're born by the Spirit. We're rebirthed by the Spirit. Then, when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which was a sep separate event for the apostles and the disciples and all the followers of Jesus on the day of Pentecost, you receive the baptism of fire and power. So you were born by the Spirit, and then you were baptized by the Spirit. Then, I want you to stay with me, because this is who the Holy Spirit is inside of us, because the Word of God says we are a temple of the Holy Spirit. So now the Holy Spirit is inside of us. And now, the Word of God says, we then receive the gifts of the Spirit, which then the Holy Spirit then flows out of us to touch the world for Christ. Whether it's healing, miracles, helps, doesn't matter what the gift of the Spirit is. They're all determined and manifested by the Holy Spirit. So, there's a saying in the body of Christ, which I did not come up with, but that we are a spirit with a body. That's how we need to look at ourselves. We are a spirit with a body. And our main function in life as a son or daughter of God is spiritual. We are spiritual beings with a body. That's how we need to look at ourselves. And, and really, there's an interesting scripture, because remember, we're Hebrews, so I want you to go to Judges 6.34. And I, I want you to read this scripture, because it's really fascinating what the Hebrew actually says. Judges chapter 6, verse 34. This is Gideon. Remember, the judges preceded the kings, and they were basically the rulers and the ones who um, God used to deliver them and also bring judgment upon the people. They were the judges. They were, before the kings came, were the judges. And God used the judges. So if you go to Judges 6, 34, it's talking about when the Holy Spirit comes upon Gideon. Because remember, Back in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would only fall on the judges, the kings, and the priests, primarily. It would not fall on everyone, and the prophets. Not all the people had the Spirit. That was the way the Holy Spirit moved, and it fell on people, and it could fall back off of them. It could come off of them, as it did with Saul. We know that. And as it did with Samson, who did not even realize the Holy Spirit left him when he lost his strength, when his hair was cut. Because remember, he was a Nazarite, and as a Nazarite, he made a vow that no razor would touch his hair. So the minute he violated that vow with God and shared that with Delilah, the secret of his hair being his power, with his vow with God, remember the spirit, the word of God says, left him. And he was without strength, and then they captured him. So it's important to know that. But in Hebrew, I want to read to you in Hebrew what that says, 634. In Hebrew, this literally says... In, the Spirit of the Lord clothed himself with Gideon. The Holy Spirit of the Lord clothed himself with Gideon. So when we say we are a spiritual being with a body outside, we're clothed with our body, 
but we're spiritual beings. The same as the Hebrew literally of what it says of Gideon. We need to see ourselves this way. We are born of the Spirit, we are baptized into the Spirit, and we have the gifts of the Spirit flow through us. So, <clears throat> so Dexter, what yeah. you're saying is that it gives us the authority to do things such as deliver the people that are possessed with evil spirits, and then it gives us anointing to heal the sick and yes. anointing to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. That's right. So it's like the power of God in action. In us. In yes. us. Yes. And I'm, I'm going to bring two more truths that bring that forth, Marisol. So let's stick on that mm -hmm. one for a second. Go to 1 Corinthians 12, because everything we say should be confirmed by the Word of God. We shouldn't have these revelations that cannot be confirmed by the Word of God. What we teach and what we speak should be confirmed by the Word of God. So go to 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7, Marisol, and this will show us that exactly. Because we want to really understand what it means when we are baptized by the Holy Spirit and what will, should happen through us. According to the Word of God, not according to man. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. It says, The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one of us for the profit of all. So first of all, we receive... The gifts of the Holy Spirit, which is what 1 Corinthians 12 through 14 is all about, for what purpose? For the, to benefit everyone in the body. Now listen what it says. For to one of us is given the word of wisdom through the Holy Spirit. To another of us, the word of knowledge through the same Holy Spirit. To another of us, faith by the same Holy Spirit. To another, gifts of holy, healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues, diverse tongues. To another, the interpretation of those diverse tongues. And listen to verse 11. That like double underlines it. But one and the same Holy Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one of us individually as the Holy Spirit wills. Who's the captain, Marisol, of the ship? The Lord. The Holy Spirit. He's the one that distributes. As we're ministering. The, he's the one that distributes these gifts according to his will. That's right. So he's in charge. He's in charge. So that's why we need to be born of the Spirit, baptized with the fire and power of the Holy Spirit, which is these gifts, and then we need to walk in step with the Spirit, as the Word of God says. And then, when we do that, Marisol, the gifts of the Spirit are manifest through us to the benefit of all of our brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. This is why we want the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Marisol. So, the gifts of the Spirit are to benefit the church. Yes. They're God's authority and power. That is different from the fruits of the Spirit. Yes, that's correct. So that leads me to ask a question that my mm -hmm. other people, people might be asking, which is kind of controversial, so forgive me. Okay. <laughs> Can a person, or is a person who operates in the gives of the Spirit more godly than a person who walks in the fruits of the Spirit? Marisol, I, I think there's a really good scriptural answer for that. Is That is, I will not walk without the fruit of the Spirit, first and foremost. And God shows us to that in 1 Corinthians 13. Thank you for asking that, because... 1 Corinthians 13 talks about the greatest gift of the Holy Spirit, which is love. It also talks mm -hmm. about faith and hope in others. But it says, if you do prophecy, you do miracles, you do any of these things, but you do them not in love, you are not serving the Lord and you're a clanging symbol, like mm -hmm. just a loud noise. You're of no benefit to the body. So it's a very easy answer to that, Marisol, which is 1 Corinthians 13. It says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become 
sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, right, one of those gifts we just listed, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, even if I have a word of knowledge, and though I have all faith, I have the gift of faith, so that I could re remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. I think I've read enough yeah. to answer your question, and it goes on, of course. So as Christians, we are to walk in the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. And, and when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, not only do you receive the fruits, but the gifts, man. The so. gifts. But it's more important that the fruits are evidence. There. That's the foundation, Mary. That's the foundation. Without compassion, if you read carefully the word of God, most of Jesus' miracles were done because it said he had compassion. Then he healed. He had compassion. Then he delivered. He wept. Then he raised Lazarus from the dead. So Marisol, the gifts of the Spirit, mercy, compassion, love, faith, hope, all of those are necessary. They're critical in order to actually be a blessing in the body because then everything we do in love is for each other, to build up each other. And they're not done with false motives, not done with selfish motives, and they're not done in the flesh. So that I would prophesy to someone I'm angry with, you're going to die tomorrow, or, or I hope you get a, a car wreck tomorrow. Which, believe it or not, people who are prophets have the power to speak those things in other people. That's why it says... Your words can be spirit and life, First, uh, John 6, 69, right around there, or they can be spirit and death. Be careful what you speak. The word of God says your words have the power of life and death. So we are always to speak as brothers and sisters in Christ, life into each other, Marisol. Not only that, but the word of God says that you have to text the spirits. Yes. You know, like if there's a prophet, you have to test to make sure that that prophet is a prophet from God because Satan can imitate God's work. That's right. And that's why the Word of God says that prophets are subject to prophets. That's right. And it's so important that you understand that. You know, somebody can say that they're a prophet or a pastor or an apostle, but if they don't have the fruit, if the walk doesn't match the talk, you have to be careful. It all has to align with what the Word of God says. Amen. Amen. And that's just walking in wisdom. Amen. You know, you have to walk in wisdom. Amen. So now, Marisol, I just want to, mm -hmm. one more fundamental thing, and then we're going to go on to mm -hmm. the baptism with fire, but I want to make sure we have this foundation from the Word of God. And that is, when the Holy Spirit comes inside of us, when we're born of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit becomes, comes inside of us, the Holy Spirit and our spirit become one spirit with God. I want to make sure we understand that. Our Holy Spirit is pure because it becomes one spirit with the Holy Spirit. And the scripture for that is 1 Corinthians 6, 17. Again, everything that we say, test it with the word of God. And this can even be proven in the scriptures about tongues. I can give you a couple of summaries of those, but, it, but how tongues actually works, the gift of tongues. So 1 Corinthians 6, 17 says... He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. It's important that we know that. And even with the gift of tongues, it says that our spirit man inside of us speaks, not our mind, but our spirit man speaks. But it, then it says the utterance comes from God, the Holy Spirit, to speak through us. That's because the Holy Spirit and our spirit become one spirit. It's important that you understand that. So when you're speaking of, in tongues, the Word of God says, you're speaking through your spirit, little s. However, the utterances are coming from the Holy Spirit who's joined to your spirit. Therefore, you're speaking perfect prayers that go directly to the throne room of God. And the Word of God says, you don't even know what your utterances are when you're speaking in tongues. You have no understanding of what they mean unless someone has the interpretation of tongues. Now, I don't want to go too far into tongues. We can teach on that another time. But that's an example so that you understand what happens when you are born of the Spirit and filled with the Holy Spirit, what, what happens with the Holy Spirit, because our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, we're clothed around the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is inside of us, one with our spirit. We're one spirit with God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that's exciting, Marisol. Amen. That they're one, we're one spirit with him. So, okay. Now that we have a foundation, Marisol, 
of what happens, how we're born of the Spirit, baptized by the Holy Spirit, and then the gifts of the Holy Spirit through the choosing of the Holy Spirit are manifested in the body of Christ to the benefit of all. That's why we always say, Marisol, when we meet, you over there, John, may have my healing. Barbara, you may have a word of encouragement for the difficulty I went through. You may have a word of consolation for the fact that I just had a, a family member die. The Lord uses us to edify and build up and bless and love each other through the gifts of the Spirit. And if I'm sick, I certainly want to know that someone else in the body can lay hands on me and through the working of the Holy Spirit, through them, I can be healed. I want to know that that member over there that has faith for healing, supernatural faith for healing, is going to be obedient to Christ and come to me when I'm sick. That's beautiful, Marisol. And, and I'm telling you, sometimes God uses the least of us, and this is what I love, for the greatest miracles. And he says that in his word. Those that of us are, think that we're proud or we're deserving of the gift flowing through us, forget it. God pours his grace through the humble, not through the proud. So if we want the free flowing of the gifts, we need to be humble before God. You know, before we go on, I, I want to share something. You know, Amen. When you get baptized with the Spirit, it's a different, everybody receives the Spirit, but it's very different. That's yes. when he got baptized with the Spirit, Amen. it was a very calm, sweet experience, you know. Because he's a very calm person. He works within your personality. Me, I'm kind of wild, so I was running through the orange fields. Like you were on fire. Like I was on fire. <laughs> you know, so don't compare yourself with That's anybody. Right. That's right. It is your walk, your intimate walk with the Lord. So when you hear these stories of how different people get baptized, don't, do not think you could, that's going to... Wait to see what the experience is with you, with God. It will be uniquely yours. Amen. Amen. And Marisol, I'm going to witness one more because I used to get driven crazy by this, brothers and sisters. Let's just talk real for a second. Because my wife, when I got baptized with the Holy Spirit, she told me about how she was on fire, like she felt like heat was inside her, and she ran through an orange grove screaming. You know? And so when I got baptized with the Holy Spirit, I didn't feel anything. And I was so frustrated, brothers and sisters. I'm like, why don't I feel the fire? Why don't I feel the power? Why am I not shaking? Why is all this not happening to me? And you know, God spoke to me wonderfully many times, and again this past week to remind me of something. The Spirit moves differently, even as He, he gives gifts out differently and manifests differently through each one of us, depending on what He wants to do in that particular meeting. Glory be to God. He also touches us differently based on our personality and what he's doing in us. And, and a man who we, Marisol and I, when we were per, ministering at the altar, first we were ministering for the baptism of fire and power. And he, he said when that happened, he did feel fire and heat through his body, a power go through his body. And I was like, well, glory to God. And then later on, he came back up and the Lord was releasing um, an anointing for dreams and visions for him. And when that anointing fell, he said, it was really like gentle and soothing as it, he felt it come into him. It was completely different. It was like a gentle river or brook. He could barely feel it, just barely. So we have to understand, not only are there seven spirits of God, right, Marisol? Both in the Old Testament and Revelation, it tells us that in chapter 4, but how what the Spirit is doing and how he does it in us is his choice. He will work differently in each one of us. I, I believe, Marisol, I can't prove this, but based on our personality, who we are, and also what he's doing through us, it's going to feel very different. So if you don't feel anything like I didn't, like my wife running through the, do not despair. Just keep your faith up and keep pursuing the manifestation of those gifts as the Lord wills it. Because remember, faith is not in what's seen. Faith is what is not seen. Hebrews 11.1. 1. That's what faith is. So even though I don't feel anything, I'm still going to believe the gifts of the Holy Spirit can flow through me as is pleasing to the Holy Spirit. 
So I go into a meeting, Marisol, and I just tell the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to do, just use me. I am a vessel for you. Whatever is pleasing to you, just use me. I surrender completely to you. If you want me to sit in the corner and intercede and just pray, I'll pray. If you want me to lay hands on anyone and you want to do something with them, Holy Spirit, you just tell me. If you want to prophesy to someone, you just, you just do it through me. I just surrender to you completely. Because I've learned, Marisol, that he wants to do something different all the time. He doesn't do the same thing in each meeting. We've seen radically different ministries of how the Holy Spirit works in each meeting. Glory be to God. Yeah, amen. Amen. And I just want to, can I give the testimony about your dad? Do you want to give it? Why don't you, why don't you, because I just want the people to understand that these gifts and how they manifest, and even how the healing, how it it worked through your brother reading the Word of God. I want people to understand how the Holy Spirit works. You know, my father is uh, 87 years old. And several years ago, he had open heart surgery. And, you know, at that time, I prayed to the Lord and I asked him to extend his life. And the Lord was so good to me. He did. Amen. Praise God. His name Thank is you, Lord. Julian. Amen. And... Um, my dad lives in Virginia, and, uh, you know, we got a call this, you know. Yesterday morning. Yesterday mm -hmm. morning at 8 o'clock from my brother. His name is Clark. Sister, father is very sick. His heartbeat is off. And I want us to pray because right now they're doing a procedure to get the rhythm in his heart to work. Right. So me and my brother prayed on the phone, you know. And he's like, you know, he says, sister, it didn't work. It didn't work. You the know? doctor announced the procedure didn't work. The, the, he said it, the procedure didn't work. So I said to my brother, you know, let's keep praying. So we hang up. So I told Dexter, you know, my husband. So, you know, when your father's, I'm his only daughter. I'm the baby. You know, I have three brothers. I'm the only girl in the family. So... I love my papi, my dad. Amen. You know, and so Amen. I was really hurting. So I went to Dexter and I said, we got to pray for my dad. The procedure didn't work. And I said, I refuse. You know, I want to believe. I'm believing. I'm believing. I'm believing. You Amen. know. So we prayed. And the Lord put it in Dexter's heart that he was to read Psalm 103, 1 mm -hmm. through 5, and declare it over my father. So we did it together, you know, in our house. And then, then Dexter called my brother, who was at my father's bedside in Virginia, with my mom, the nurses, my future sister-in-law. And he said, Clark, you need to read... Psalm 103, 1 through 5, over Papi, which is Daddy in Spanish. So my brother was obedient. And he read it, you know, over my dad. And my brother was, as soon as he said the last word on the psalm, the monitor with the heart beat went boom, and my father's heartbeat went to perfect. God Hallelujah. healed him immediately. God is faithful, and it only happened because Dexter was anointed by the Holy Spirit in one of the use of the gifts of the Spirit in order to discern what the Lord wanted to be done for the situation. Amen. So, Dexter, can, can you share? But, um, but here's the thing, and the Spirit's on me right now to mm -hmm. confirm this. The Spirit wanted to work through Clark. Amen. And the Spirit is all over me, brothers and sisters, confirming this. And he told us later on why. Because as soon as that last verse was writ, read in front of the doctors and the nurses who were bringing him an ICU, because it was a very dangerous situation at that point, because the procedure did not work. And at that age, it gets very dangerous. As soon as that last, his heart rate went to normal, and none of the doctors and nurses could explain it, and they were astounded. I want you to understand something here. God gets glory for these miracles. And he used Clark, my beloved brother, 
to read this in front of them as a word of testimony, before them as believers, and God moved in that Kairos time at that moment. That's why the procedure didn't work before, because God had an ordained time for him to receive the most glory, even in front of potentially unbelievers in a hospital. And that, I am amazed and stunned at the way God works. Sometimes our miracle is there, but it's not going to manifest until the appointed Kairos time. For example, the man who was born blind didn't receive his sight until Jesus came through and was able to teach that this man was not blind because of his sins and the sins of his parents, as the disciples thought, but he was blind so that the glory of God could be manifest at this point in time because I'm going to heal him. And then he had eyes to see. And God receives the glory. That's the beauty of this. The gifts are manifest so that we edify each other, but also so God receives the glory. And many times, Marisol, it's so that everyone's faith grows to the next level and we get spiritually promoted because we have a new level of faith because we see the power of God is real. And we had faith. We prayed together and someone was healed. Do you know what that does to us, Marisol? Yeah, I was so excited. It, it's amazing. We were rejoicing. He wrote after that, it's, it's like a miracle, and he wrote 15 exclamation points, which, by the way, is five for grace times three for the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He didn't even know he did it. He was so stunned, he wrote 15 exclamation points when he texted me back. And you Glory know, be to God. And it's so important that you seek the one who gives the anointing, not the anointing. Amen. And, and Marisol, the Lord's asking us to read Psalm 103, mm -hmm. 1 through 5, because he wants to release miracles even for those who are sick in your family. Amen. So you just come in agreement, and we're going to read this over anyone that is sick to be healed in the name of Jesus. Psalm 103, turn to it. And if you can read with me, I'm reading in the New King James Version. It doesn't matter. If not, just say, I agree, and amen as we read. And just speak the name of the person we're reading it over. And it, just speak their name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities. John, whatever your name is. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. In the name of Jesus, we come in agreement with yes. you, brothers and sisters, whoever you just prayed that over. Yes. Holy Spirit, let your power of the resurrection come and raise them up and heal yes. them by the precious stripes of the Lamb of God. Be healed yes. of whatever you have to be healed of in, in Jesus, Jesus' name. name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Well, Marisol, now let's get to the baptism of fire. Oh, we, have to, we have to step this up a little bit. I'm sorry. The Holy Spirit is bringing us in a couple different directions here, and we're just going to obey him. So, and we are going to pray for the baptism at the end, so you stick with us. If Turn. not, we'll just do it again. Yeah, we'll amen. Finish. Malachi 3, verse 2. Again, in Matthew 3, 11, it says, you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That's John the Baptist speaking. So now... If we go to Malachi 3, 2, let's start to understand what the fire part is for. 3, 2. Who can endure, Malachi 3, 2, the day of his coming, and who can stand when he reappears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Ha! Huh. So, the baptism of fire, and we've seen this over and over again in each one of us and in our brothers and sisters. Remember, God is holy, and his command is for us to be holy as he is holy. That means he needs to purify or refine all the dross, anything that is sinful, and not of God in us, and heal all of our past so that we refine and we, are, we glow as bright gold or bright silver. So remove 
and destroy all our iniquities, all our sins. The yoke of anything the devil has on us. That has an, is an, purify us. Yeah, because the yoke is destroyed by the anointing. The Holy Spirit again, there it is. Amen. That's the fire of the Holy Spirit destroys the yoke or any bondage that hold that sin has on us. So any sin that we're practicing can be burned out by the refiner's fire. That's the point. So that we will walk in holiness because God has been telling us over and over again, you need the baptism of fire, the refiner's fire, in order to have the baptism of power or walk in the gifts. Because otherwise, you're going to be tainted. So instead of walking in love and the gift of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit of love, you're going to be walking in revenge. You're going to prophesy to someone when you're angry. These things cannot and will not be. We need to be purified and holy first, refined. Then we can be trusted with the power of God. And God will be given glory. And we can stop looking around in the church being called a bunch of hypocrites. That on one end are lusting with their eyes after every lady and committing adultery and going to bars and getting drunk. And on the other, going to church on Sunday and saying, we're holy, holy, holy. Enough of that. We need the baptism of the fire. We need to be refined. We need to be purified so that the sinful life within us and our past, even the deep hurts of our past, are healed and burned out. Let's go to another scripture, Marisol. It's Isaiah chapter 4. Isaiah 4. Verse 4. Listen to this word carefully. Isaiah 4.4, 4, When the Lord God has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and purged the blood of Jerusalem from her midst, by what? By the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning or fire. Then the Lord will create above every dwelling place of Mount Zion and above her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For over all the glory there will be a covering. Again, God is showing us a purpose, washing away the filth, our sinful lifestyles. Because when we are born of the Spirit and we walk in step with the Spirit, we crucify our flesh and all those fleshly desires are crucified in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Then we can be prepared to hold the power and walk in the manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So we have to re reflect God's character and walk in purity in all the areas of our life. And, you know, in, in, in our finances and our morals in the way we deal with people. Yes. We have to reflect him. Right. Because Marisol, let's just stop. We are a temple of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit of holiness. The same, that, that, that Isaiah in chapter 6, Isaiah 6 couldn't even, he fell flat on his face because he felt his sinfulness when he was in the presence of God. So, if we're a temple of the Holy Spirit, Glory be to God. And we just saw Mary, so we need to be born of the Spirit and filled with the Spirit, and therefore the gifts of the Spirit can flow through us. Do we want to grieve the Holy Spirit by our sins? Because no. the Word of God says we grieve the Holy Spirit. We must not grieve the Holy Spirit. The Word of God commands us to be filled with the Spirit because the Word of God says we can quench or grieve the Holy Spirit. And therefore, He's going to go. He's a dove. He's a gentle dove. He's going to fly off. And we're going to be sitting or walking in the flesh as carnal Christians. This must not be. Amen. Now let's go to one more. Just so, in case you don't believe this yet, because this word of truth will sink into your hearts and minds, brothers and sisters. Zechariah 13, 9. Again, the refiner's fire. What's the purpose? The Lord God says, I will bring the one-third through the fire, will refine them as silver is refined, and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name, and I will answer them. I will say, this is my people, and each one will say, the Lord is my God. So even the Jewish people are going to be refined through the fire because they need to be purified. And glory be to God, we all do. 
by the refiner's fire. So only the ones that are faithful. And refined, yes. Oh. That's why all the impurities, all the things we bring in Marisol into our life, right? Mm -hmm. When we come to Christ, they must not remain. We must submit ourselves to the baptism of fire, ask for the baptism of fire to refine out all that is not of God, to leave forth the purity of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit in us. Because it says, those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God, and those who are led by the Spirit will not walk in accordance with the flesh. Because remember, we are spiritual beings with a body. We are clothed with a body, even as Gideon was. That's who we are. And that spirit inside of us, united with our spirit, is the Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit of holiness. Hallelujah. And Dexter, and what are the, you know, somebody might ask you, I want to read what the, the walking in the flesh is. Walking in the flesh are the acts of the sinful nature. Sexual immorality, immorality impurity, Devouchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, hatred, hating people, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Right, Marisol, and a good interpretation of that in Greek is those, and this is the New King James Version, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Glory be to God, Marisol. Can, can you think of a better reason to want to be refined other than the fact that you want to walk in holiness so that you can be heaven. in the kingdom of God and go to heaven? Is Amen. that like not just a little bit important? Is that not really important? Very important. Do we want to go to hell? No. No. You know, and read on to verse 24. Then it talks about the fruit of the Spirit in 22 and 23. And it says, those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So, you conquer those things by the baptism of fire and giving the Holy Spirit the ability to purify you. That means you surrender, Marisol. That means when the Spirit convicts you, you read the Word of God, and you see that when you lust for another woman other than your wife with your eyes, that's adultery, and you just read that adulterers will not go to heaven, and you read that and the Holy Spirit convicts you, you must not turn away from that conviction and go back to that sin. You need to get on your knees and repent. We need to ask for the baptism of fire and for God to cleanse us of that. With whatever is necessary to surrender to be cleansed of that so that we walk in holiness. And I don't know about you, Marisol, but even for me, one of the things the Lord did me when I made that vow and came before the Lord was he had me do the covenant with my eyes as Job did that I would not lust or desire after any other woman than my precious wife. And he has anointed that covenant with my eyes and empowered it, glory be to God. So I don't have to just do it in my own strength. I know the anointing of the Holy Spirit when I am weak is powerful through me. That's the power of God that makes a difference. Hallelujah. Amen. So... <clears throat> Wow. Marisol, I want to read one more scripture and then we want to pray. Glory be to God. I want to read Revela Revelation, three, chapter 3. Verse 17. This is a letter to the church of the Laodiceans. And they were lukewarm brothers and sisters. In other words, they just were half in the world and half in the church. They go to church on Sunday and then they go follow the lust of their eyes or go look at pornography on the internet or go gossip about a brother or sister or go backbite a brother or sister they're jealous or envious of all throughout the week. And then they go to church and do this. That's straddling the fence. That's being lukewarm. And the Lord Jesus said, I will vomit you out if you're lukewarm. 
And then he says in verse 17, Because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich and in white garments, that you, that you may be clothed in white garments, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. And as many as I love, this is Jesus speaking, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. And that refined in the fire is us. That's, that's submitting yourself to the refiner's fire. That's asking for the baptism of fire, as we're going to do in a minute. This, Jesus commanded that we do it. And those of you who are lukewarm, and you know what I mean by lukewarm. You go to church, but during the week, your first love, when you first wake up, is your first thought of Jesus. When you go to sleep, is your last thought of Jesus. All throughout the day, are you talking to Jesus? Are you loving him? You know when you're in love with Jesus and you're on fire for him because he wants you to be hot on fire for him. If you're lukewarm, we all need to be baptized by the baptism of fire. Hallelujah. So Marisol, mm -hmm. let's pray in agreement for the baptism of fire and power and that the spirit of burning, the spirit of fire would come into our lives and change us into the image of Christ. Brothers and sisters, this will make a difference in your life. In each church that we have done this, people have felt the fire. Remember how you feel it will be different, depends on who you are. And people are repenting. We had in one church, as God is my witness, at least half the church on their face in front of the altar, repenting. That's the spirit of repentance. So let's pray, brothers and sisters, for the baptism of fire and power, Marisol, because we need it. Because remember, we are to be spiritual beings clothed with the body. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, almighty God. The word of God says, Jesus, you are the one who will baptize us with fire. John the Baptist spoke this. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to your throne your throne of grace, and we ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to baptize each one of us with your fire. Baptize with us with your holy fire. Yes. Baptize us with your refiner's fire. Yes. And we surrender, we submit, we humbly give our surrender all that we are and all that we will be to be holy yes. and refined by you and you alone Jesus in the name, name of Jesus. Father God, refine yes, us. Lord, in Jesus name. Make us into the image of your precious yes. Son, Jesus Christ. Make us into the make us yes. vessels that are a temple that is holy for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pleasing to the Holy Spirit, unlike any man or woman has worked, walked on the earth. We surrender to be pleasing temples for you, Holy Spirit. And now, Holy Spirit, come and baptize my brothers and sisters, all of us, with the baptism of fire. We need you. We decide and we choose yes. to be a, one with you, Holy Spirit. Yes. To be led by you, Holy Spirit, all yes. the days of our life. In Jesus name. And now, Father, baptize us with your power. Yes. As you said in Acts, yes. when Jesus spoke to the disciples, wait and you will yes. be baptized with fire and with power. And we ask yes. now to be baptized with your power. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, baptize us. Precious God, in the name of Jesus, baptize us with power, for we will not walk in our own flesh and serve you. We choose to serve you only through your precious gifts and fruit of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Lord. We thank you for the baptism. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Brothers and sisters, when you seek him, you will find him. Because when you seek him with all your heart, he's going to answer you. Amen. I, you know, I want to ask you to please write to us with your prayer request. You know, the address is on the screen. You know, you can write to Shalom Shalom, 321 North Pass Avenue, Suite 52, Bourbon, California, 91505. Brother Dexter and myself want to hear from you. Amen. We want to hear your praise reports. 
We want to hear your needs so that we can pray and, and agree with your prayers. Amen. And also, we would like for you to consider and pray becoming an intercessor for us, praying for us, for our ministry, and also become a monthly supporter of our ministry. Amen. Thank you, and Jesus. And ask the Lord to show you if you... If he's leading you to help us financially. Amen. To continue to respond the gospel. Amen. You know, and, and if you do, just write to us and, and help us to continue to reach and teach the word of God. You know, some people are able to go and some people are called to send. Amen. 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 We bless you. We love you. And remember, there's nothing more beautiful than Jesus. Amen. And I'm, the Lord just asked yes. me to... Speak the ironic blessing over yes. all of you, precious brothers and sisters. Yes. We love you. Now may the Lord, Lord God Almighty, bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his beautiful countenance upon each one of you and give you his peace, his shalom, shalom, his perfect peace in the name of Jesus. Be blessed and we love you. Amen. Amen. And as we say goodbye, I ask you to please pray for the peace of Israel. Amen. And, and for protection for all those people, Amen. the innocent people. Amen. Shalom, shalom. Amen. We love you. Amen. Be